Hello and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther and today is tree planting day. So if you've been following my channel and uh, my sort of adventures, my, one of my goals this year, in addition to having a community garden that I'm building out, um, is to, in my, at home, is to make my backyard beautiful in a place that I love to be in and is full of native plants and trees and shrubs and other things that's beneficial to the local wildlife and just as pretty as well. Today is tree planting day or shrub planting day, either way, because one of them is a shrub technically. The other are deciduous trees, I think is the term. So how this came about is I had a sort of as a pilot program, I had a visit from the Audubon Society. Uh, two ladies came last fall and walked around the property and gave me advice on what I can do. And I had never before considered the potential to plant sort of, they're called understory trees, trees that can handle some shade because we have a massive sweet gum that right now it's two o'clock in the afternoon and I'm sitting in the shade in our backyard. Um, so the sweet gum, you know, does a great job of providing shade. I'm planting four today, one of which I forgot I'd ordered, <laughs> um, but I'm happy I did. Two of which I got from the city for free as part of the city's helping to grow natives and sort of tree planting program. The city has a, a broader goal of building out its tree canopy, the percentage of tree canopy um, within the city boundaries. And so this is part of their project. So from the city I got, and I'll show you in a second what these plants look like, they're pretty big. I got um, flowering dogwood, service berry with some of you some of you have commented on how delicious they are the berries from service berries and i'm really looking forward to that i also have this is the one i forgot i had ordered already which is prairie nine bark and this is a um i think this is a shrub it's native to maryland zone 7a where i am and it comes in a uh, sort of a wrapped up peat moss moisture thing that I'm then gonna, this is a bare root thing, so I'm gonna plant this pretty deep. Comes with a really nice little sort of uh, description of where the, where the soil line is and where you wanna plant the plant. And it comes with a nice little, this from Prairie Moon Nursery is where I got this one. It's a nice little planting guide. Um, so I'm gonna plant this. And then I've already planted one of two of the witch hazel. Oh, I just, it just peed all over me. Well, that's okay. I'm not mad at you. <laughs> One of two witch hazel plants that I got. This is a sapling I got from uh, an Etsy seller over winter, late early, late winter. And uh, it's been growing indoors. I've had it outside for about two weeks now. One has been planted and the other ones get planted today. And one of the neat things I get about the trees that I got from the city is that they actually come with sapling soakers. They're these little um, plastic things that you fill with water that it says empties in five to eight hours so it's like a slow drip into it and you water it weekly you put you fill this up weekly and it helps water the plant to make sure it stays moist came you know for free for two of these so the city really i mean it's an amazing program i don't know how many years they're going to do it. i think this is the first year they're offering it um but i was just so thrilled that they're doing this you'll notice i'm sitting on something different with sort of a different background this is a teak wood uh, bench that we got just really pretty that we got for free from somebody offering it up online uh, a friend of mine um, helped move it in her truck and we've actually had it by the side of the house in the driveway since last fall hadn't had a place to put it but now I've cleared a space made it look nice in this area and I'm going to show you and I this bench is super light I'm amazed teak wood is a really lightweight wood and this gray doesn't actually mean that it's going bad this is the sort of patina or whatever color that comes with teak wood as it ages it gets this beautiful sort of silver gray teak wood I've read is one of the few woods with one of the reasons it's prized for outdoor furniture is that it has natural oils that it maintains pretty well compared to a lot of other woods that get cut so the teak wood tends to last a lot longer in outdoor conditions than other woods without any treatment and we haven't done anything to it it's not splintering it's great I also want to show you what I've done with this little patio area in the backyard well it's a little messy right now but here it is so this I put cardboard underneath and then I put that leaf grow compost on top which Lilu is enjoying at the moment and then I created sort of a path into this patio well before even this this area was full of weeds And then I weeded the patio yesterday. I 
swept it off, although some of the dirt got tracked on there by the dogs playing around. And then I put cardboard down, like you saw me do in the last video I did, uh, where I made, uh, two videos ago, where I made a, a backyard bed over there, if you recall. And so I plan on putting like flowers and, and one, of the, one of the plants I'm planning on growing and one of those trees or shrubs over here. And then I added, this is a square foot garden, a four by four bed that I had a rivers in, river song is hanging out in, uh, that I had kept many of my lettuces that the groundhog just enjoyed way too much. So actually I'm gonna still have wildflowers there, native plants, but for now I don't have anything planted there, but I put mulch and cardboard around it just to make the whole area look better. Uh, these things are actually part of what was our chain link fence and I've decided to put them around as sort of like an industrial construction area looking thing and I think I'm gonna paint these in either like a slate blue to kind of match the shed or like a dark um, uh, gray but like a proper gray not like a rusty gray <laughs> all right so now for where I'm gonna put the, the shrubs this is the dogwood the flowering dogwood Looks like it's already starting to put out some leaves. And then this is the service berry. And you can already see where it's already done the flowering for the year, but it'll have some nice berries, hopefully uh, by the end of the year for, you know, late summer for the birds and potentially for me too. The instructions that came with the tree said to dig the hole as shallow about the depth of the container itself and to dig it about two to three times the width of the container. So I did that. And then I had my husband come out and help me figure out where the tree was straight. And then I started backfilling in the soil and adding water as I went to help get rid of uh, air pockets in it. And this tree is expected to grow about 15 to 30 feet wide on top, but it tends to have a fairly narrow bottom, if I recall correctly. Now here I am evening out the, sort of leveling out the soil so that the water will pool evenly and not all go to one side. So I'm gonna put a little water in and make sure that it's not all going to one side anymore. And it looks like it's staying all the way around. So that's a real exciting thing. And now I'm installing the soaker ring, which was pretty easy. It had a little Velcro attachment and a screw off, which is a little difficult to get off thing, but you just put the hose in and it starts filling up. And uh, yeah, it was pretty easy to fill up, honestly. I made sure there weren't any air pockets and things like that, but uh, filled up pretty quick. Next up is the witch hazel plant. Now, because this is a smaller sapling, I didn't have to dig as big of a hole, but I still dug it about twice the width of the plant itself. And then I went and I just broke up the little clumps of clay and topsoil that I had dug out so that it'd be kind of loose uh, or at least easy for the roots to expand. And then I just pushed it down a tiny bit with my foot just to help give it some support and filled it in with water and it was good to go. Well, I might've been a little over ambitious when I thought I could finish all four trees in one day, especially with the other things I had to accomplish. So let me show you real quick what other places I'm planning on putting the other two trees. And uh, I'll close out with a nice shot of some of the perennials that are coming back from last year. So here on the left is where I'm gonna be planting the service berry. And on the right, you can see where I just planted the witch hazel that I just showed a clip of. And then I'm gonna plant the common nine bark over here. 